What I have over here are graphite plates. And these graphite plates can be used in batteries or even in some fuel cells. And for this reason, I was thinking that in this video, I will make my own version of graphite plates. Can't figure it out. I never put the And like I said, here I have some commercial available graphite plates. So like this one, you can buy on eBay and they come from China. Um, and actually the graphite plates like this one, they have some use in batteries, like in some flow batteries or some bipolar batteries. And they also have some use in some fuel cells. And they are used like standard electrodes or some bipolar electrodes and they came with uh, smooth surfaces like this one or you can also have some graphite plates which have some a little bit different shape but if you look the prices of this kind of bipolar graphite plate with integrated flow channels uh, the price can be a little bit high and for this reason, I was thinking that in this video, I will try to make my own version of these graphite plates. Because in the end, I already make some graphite plates. Uh, my first use of my custom made graphite plate was nine years ago. And uh, I make my first graphite plates with uh, graphite powder, mix it together with some polystyrene. But if you look into making this kind of graphite plates, uh, actually they are not so difficult to make because only what you need are two materials. The first material of course will be the conductive material and the second material will be the binder. Sometimes you also need some solvent, um, but most of the time you only need the conductive material and the binder. So yeah, for the conductive material, you can use some graphite powder or carbon black, or even you can mix these two uh, materials together. So for the binder, uh, it's better to use some epoxy because uh, epoxy uh, is really strong uh, binder. And also in most cases, the epoxy will not react to most of the chemicals. Uh, and also with the epoxy resin, you will also get some really, really strong uh, electrode like this one. And then the next important thing is how you make uh, this kind of electrode. Because it's really important that the conductive material and the binder are mixed really, really well together. And in the end, it's also really important that you press the electrode really, really hard together. Because more you press the conductive material together, better will be the conductivity of the electrode. So, in this video, I decided that I will make some graphite plate from graphite powder and some epoxy resin. But before this, I will first need to make my custom mold. And now, let's go to the process. And for this project, I will use this Ceratec Sculpt Resin. Now is the time for making some bipolar plate. So over here I have everything what I need to make this plate. So this one is really important. Here is my custom made mold and this mold is printed with some resin printer. But because this mold is made from resin and the resin can crack really easily, for this reason I recommend to use some metal molds. Uh, but because this uh, mold can crack really easily. For this reason, I also print some support with PLA. Uh, so this 
mode will go into this support okay this was about the mode and now the next thing is this here i have 11 grams of graphite powder so over here i have only graphite powder but in your case you can also experiment with different materials and to this graphite powder you can also add uh, i don't know a little bit of carbon black or you can also use some different particle size of graphite so over here the particle size of this graphite is 15 microns and now i also need some binder and the binder which i will use will be some epoxy so here i have this five minute epoxy which means that when i will make this uh, uh, conductive clay then i need to work a little bit more faster um, but instead of epoxy you can also use some other binders but in this case make note that with different binder you will also get different mechanical performance of your plate so the amount of this epoxy which i will use will be from 7 to 9 grams so 11 grams of graphite powder and 7 to 9 grams of this epoxy Okay, 9 grams. And now to these 9 grams of epoxy, I will also add 11 grams of graphite. And now this mold, I mean these surfaces of this mold, I will also spray with some silicone spray. Okay. And to make sure that this graphite plate will not stick to the mold, for this reason I will also uh, add some baking paper uh to the bottom like so and now i will put this material into this mold Okay, and now I will also make some disc-like graphite bipolar plates and this is because um, to make some bipolar plate in some disc form you don't need actually some custom molds like this one. So you don't need any resin printer and you also don't need some custom molds because only what you need is some tube like this one and something that will go into the tube like so and that's it so with this two you can make some disc shaped bipolar graphite plates really easily and actually what you need to do is to fill this uh, tube with your material and then you actually just hammer down the material okay here i have my material 
which is made from graphite and epoxy. And finally, after 12 hours of waiting, here I have my graphite plate. But before I will test this graphite plate for the conductivity, I will also show you my other electrodes, which I make previously. So here I already make three electrodes. This one was the first, and you also see that this one is damaged. Uh, this is because uh, this graphite plate stick to the mold really really well together and I had some hard time uh, to put out this electrode from the mold and in this process I also damaged the electrode. Uh, then this one was my second one. This one is really really hard. And this one, I try uh, to make some graphite electrode with integrated flow channels. Also here, I have a little bit of damage because also this electrode stick to the mold really, really well together. And for this reason, I damage the electrode a little bit. But yeah, so I custom design the mold uh, with integrated flow channels and this is actually the result which I get. So actually, if I have some CNC machine and some really nice press, then in this case with CNC machine I will be able to make my custom, uh, custom metal molds and with some press I will be able to press all these electrodes really really well together. And now let's check some connectivity of these graphite electrodes. But before I will test the conductivity of this one, I want to know what is also the conductivity of the commercial available graphite plates. So this one have the surface conductivity of 0 0.9 ohms and this electrode from China have the surface conductivity of 0 0.2, 0 0.1 ohm, which is actually not, not so bad. And now I will test my um, graphite plate. And yeah, I get the surface conductivity of 3 ohms. And because uh, the graphite electrodes uh, are also used for bipolar electrodes, for this reason the conductivity in Z direction is also really important. And actually, let's see what will be the conductivity of the Z direction. and I get 0 
0.8 ohms. But that, let's check this commercial available graphite plate. Yeah, of course, this one have really nice conductivity. Zero point three ohms. Not bad. And for the last, I will also check this graphite electrode. So this one was made with this uh, acrylic tube. And the conductivity of this one is 1.8 ohms. So really nice. So for the first try of making some graphite plate from a graphite powder and epoxy, uh, this was quite good actually. And for the next time, I hoping that I will find some pressing machine uh, with which I will be able to press the conductive material really, really well together. And then I will see what I will get. But for now, uh, that's it and we see us in the next video. Bye.